All right, today Dr. Dan Patel is going to teach us the proper way to drive molecular sieves over which we can store or dry organic solvents. Thank you, Jason. Uh, so to, to dry the sieves, you really need to start with an airtight setup. So you start with a Schlenk flask that has some molecular sieves. These can be sieves that have come from the oven or sieves that have just been sitting around in, in a, a, a jar somewhere. Um, the, the entire purpose of this exercise is to ensure that these are really bone dry. And so we've got the Schlenk flask with our sieves. We've got this needle valve that will allow us to put this under vacuum, close it off, put it under nitrogen, close it off. And then we've got a septum with some copper wire tied around it rather tightly to ensure that the septum itself is airtight. And so the first thing that we do is make sure that everything is securely clamped. And then we open the system to nitrogen and we take a Bunsen burner and light the Bunsen burner and heat the bottom of the flask. Basically anywhere there's sieves you want to make sure you, you heat evenly. And it'll take a minute or so but you'll actually be able to see water leaving the sieves and then condensing on the cooler parts of the flask. You want to make sure you've got a bright blue flame and really that the, the cone part of the flame is what's coming into contact with the Schlenk flask. So the flask is, is under nitrogen, not under vacuum right now. Correct. You don't ever want to heat a flask with a Bunsen burner while it's under vacuum because that could lead to a dangerous situation. The flame basically heats the glass, it weakens it, and if you've got it under vacuum, you could have an implosion or, or the glass itself will get deformed. So, probably another few more seconds of heating this, and I can already see around the cooler part of the flask, um, the, the index of refraction is changing a bit and, um, and that's because there's water that's condensing, water that's coming from the now heated sieves. And so at this point I think the sieves are, are hot enough that we can turn off the Bunsen burner and then move it out of the way. We'll let the glass cool for a few seconds. Um, I don't know if you want to bring the camera in but you can actually see condensate. Um, the camera may not catch it, but, but to the eye, it's very clear that there's condensate all around the sides of the flask. So the glass is cooled enough now that, that it, shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't have a, vis a viscosity that will allow it to either um, be sucked up by the vacuum or, or allow the glass itself to implode. Right now, the, the condensate is starting to work its way down, so what we do is shut the system off to nitrogen and then open it up to vacuum. And so now that this is open to vacuum, the, the water that is condensed is going to get pulled in and collected by the trap. And you want to make sure that whenever you're doing this, because you're going to be moving um, relatively large amounts of water when you consider the, the system, you want to make sure that the trap has liquid nitrogen in it. Um, and is properly set up to prevent the water from working its way into the pump, damaging your oil, and then eventually damaging your pump. So, I'm going to make sure this is open a little bit more. Actually, I think the system was probably closed a bit. Um, you heard the, the pump start humming as I open this even more, and that's just saying that it's actually pulling a vacuum on the flask. And so you, you go through this cycle um, a few times. Now that it's under vacuum, you leave it under vacuum for about five minutes. Um, you come back and you put it back under nitrogen and you heat the sieves again. You'll see water condense. You, you then put the sieves under vacuum uh, for a few minutes, let it cool, back to nitrogen, vacuum, nitrogen, heating um, with, with every nitrogen step until you're 
um, you're convinced and you're satisfied that the sieves are dry, and you can tell that they're dry because you shouldn't see any more condensation coming from the sieves when you heat them. Um, and so uh, after a few cycles of this, the sieves will be ready for whatever solvent you would like to keep dry. Thank you, Dan.